Maybe it's a family out running a lemonade stand. Hula hooping, jump roping. Cha-cha. Free haircuts. It's dodgeball. A teenager practicing their latest song. Aerobics. Yoga. Advice on nutrition. Bike. Dancing. Or walking. It's kids playing soccer in the middle of the street. streets are when you temporarily close a street to people driving and then open it up for people biking, walking, skating, running, pretty much do anything but drive a car. And it's a really amazing way to activate a street and to get a whole wide variety of people together as a community to be, yes, physically active, but also social. It's like an exercise in social integration. You get young and old, rich and poor, fat and skinny. You get everybody. To enjoy the Ciclovia or open streets, all you need is two feet and a heartbeat. All races, all ages, looking at each other in the face, smiling, being, there's sort of like this civic pride of, of people being together in public space. Well, the notion that streets are for people uh, is a very powerful concept. And I think summer streets underscores that concept, celebrates the concept that streets are for people. It's a wonderful experience for anyone who really lives in the city, dominated by cars, just being to enjoy uh, places where never you imagine to be walking because the cars really take all of our streets. When you take a look at any city from the air, the biggest public space are the streets. So the Ciclovia Open Street, it's showing people that the streets can have different uses according to the time of the day, the day of the week, the week of the year. It's a great way to bring in new folks who are maybe interested in, in biking more and walking more and adding more physical activity to their lifestyle but aren't sure how. We sort of default to the automobile uh, is the only thing that can happen in the streets and trucks and buses and the reality is that if you look back to the turn of the last century, there weren't any automobiles and it was people using the streets on streetcars, people on horses, people on bicycles, and people walking in the streets. It's been wonderful for New Yorkers, I think, to see their city assets differently. So you look up and you're really able to appreciate the unbelievable architectural beauty uh, that surrounds us in New York City and see those buildings up close in a way that you don't when you're speeding by in a cab. Many of us were really inspired by what we saw happening in Bogota and other South American cities and Central American cities and we were just thrilled to see success on the streets. Um, we brought the idea of open streets to then Mayor Gavin Newsom and we were thrilled that he was interested. Ciclovia in Los Angeles got started when a bunch of bicyclists heard about the example in Bogota and in other cities and started to organize around it and then the mayor took a trip to Copenhagen and to Mexico City and came back and said we should do a Ciclovia in Los Angeles. And when I was commissioner in Bogota there was a very small program with a few thousand people and my inspiration was Central Park. We need places where people can meet, meet each other as sequels and that was the idea of Central Park. So I said bingo, you know, Ciclovia can be like the Central Park for any city anywhere. Now, Bogota is obviously world famous for their Ciclovia which started in 1974 but as early as 1965 cities like Seattle um, then soon thereafter, and in 67, we had New York and San Francisco closing off streets to cars so that people could, um, could recreate. So this is actually a movement that was born right here in America. But we've seen in the past five or so years the number of open streets initiatives in North America expand by about tenfold. And you know, not just in the, the places where you might expect, places like Portland or San Francisco, but in communities of all types. At our recent open streets training, we had folks from Nebraska, we had folks from Oklahoma, Hawaii, uh, down south to Texas, and then all the way up to Minnesota. Communities of all types and sizes, from the east, the west, north, south. we decided to do an internal research project on where this is happening and the best practices. And as we were researching, more and more initiatives kept getting planned, so we kept doing more and more research. 
Um, and that's when we decided to partner with the Alliance for Biking and Walking and seek out a grant to produce what we call the Open Streets Project, which is the only comprehensive source of information for open streets uh, in, in North America. We recently had our first ever national open streets training in Minneapolis. We had leaders from 50 communities of all sizes from across the continent, introducing many folks to the concept of, of open streets, going through the different aspects of planning, so talking about how do you choose your route, how do you partner with local organizations, how do you recruit volunteers. In San Francisco, I think one of the great successes that we're seeing is real data and measurements showing that Sunday Streets is improving people's health it is improving people's activity level. When people come out to Sunday streets, they are more likely to get more physical activity more often. And in fact, World Health Organization over the last uh, five years already adopted the idea that public transit, that cyclovias, biking is something so critical to achieve the minimum amount of exercise that we need to have a, a healthy life. There was a seven-year-old who got separated from her parents who rode seven and a half miles and was located on the other end of the route. So it just creates this really safe space. When people are creating cyclovias or open streets, there is always some resistance. And the better the city, the more resistance because sometimes it's more difficult to go from good to great than from bad to great. But nevertheless, people got to realize change is hard. When people are coming out to these commercial corridors and, and frequenting Sunday streets, they're also spending money at the local businesses. They're learning about new neighborhoods, and we are seeing economic activity go up. After the first one, they said, oh, the bike thing, okay, cool, I'm going to staff up, we're going to offer special restaurant deals and stuff like that. So I think it brings a lot of foot traffic to businesses along the route is, is a big benefit. This year we saw a ton of city bikes uh, on the route, and so that was even uh, a bigger high. Uh, to see these fleets and fleets of blue bikes amid all of the other thousands of bikes that we saw on the streets. We have now 300,000 uh, people that come out to summer streets every year. I think it's so popular now that I think if you spin the globe, uh, wherever it stopped, you'd probably find a city that's either done a Sicilia or is planning a Sicilia. I think San Francisco has one of the most robust open streets events in that ours are happening 10 times a year. That's wonderful. We think there's a lot more potential to be happening a lot more often. Uh, we're really encouraging the city to consider every Sunday for an entire season. Really think about a summer season or a fall season of every single Sunday. You can also use open streets as a way to demonstrate what the street could be for the future. So now we're seeing a lot of initiatives start to pilot test things like cycle tracks or use um, build a better block initiatives as been done in San Antonio where you actually physically mock up and create what's called a rendering in real time on what the street could be. The Ciclovia brings back the, the opportunity of this social contact. And it should be an obligation for any mayor or any city authority. As we need water, uh, telephone, TV or cable, we need public space where we can enjoy ourselves. This should be an obligation. It shouldn't be something exceptional. It should be the norm.